Hello, and welcome to week two of EDSC 504. The first thing I want to discuss is a little adjustment in the schedule. Because the site was, I'm sorry, late getting up and running and we had some glitches, and because I think the amount, the duration that it would take to do all the activities in the first week may exceed the targeted three hours like you would spend in a face-to-face -face class. I've just decided to extend week one through week two and to drastically cut back week two. So essentially you'll have until Saturday, February the 1st to complete week one and weeks two efforts. That doesn't mean that this is uh, you should wait to the last minute and try and cram not one but one and a half weeks worth of work in to the last day or two um, of next week. You need to dig in now and hopefully then everyone will be caught up and on task ready to go into week three. The other thing I realized in reviewing the screencast for last week, although best practices indicate that you should always have, you shouldn't have a, a you know, basically a disassociated voice with a head. You should be able to see the person who's talking to you. I found my presence on the screens very distracting. So this week, I'm going to just do this introduction and then I'm, my face is going to go away and we're going to be looking at just the slides or the screens that we need to to get through week two. The last thing you need to know is because I've cut out a substantial number of the activities we're going to do, this won't be a very, this won't be as long a screencast as we had the last two. So now, what we're going to do is just go through the activities for week two. We're going to look at a response to the readings. We're going to look a little bit about uh, at NETS T or uh, the uh, National Educational Technology Standards for Teachers, which have recently been renamed, and we'll go through that. We're not going to do any any work with content tools this week, but I will set you up to do some work with contact tools, content tools in week three. And I want to make sure you get all signed up for your class facilitation. In other words, one of the assignments we have is that you're going to work in groups and actually facilitate a week of this class. And I want you to know how to sign up and get started on that assignment. So now, I'm going to say bye-bye. So the first thing I want you to do is to read Papert's article, Simon Papert's 1972 article about computers and math, mathematics learning. Uh, it's entitled, Teaching Children to Be Mathematicians Versus Teaching About Mathematics. Then I want you to watch a video of his early work, some of his early th thinking about how you teach children mathematics, or rather how you uh, set the environment so that children can discover mathematics and look concepts and learn to, th learn to think like mathematicians. And then a video that's a little later in which he talks about his concept of math land. Finally, I want you to go out to the forum and answer the question about what is Papert suggesting or asking. Find a quote from Papert's chapter and relate it to one or both of these videos to answer the question. Then relate your answer to a classmate's by responding to their, for, their post in the forum. So now we're going to take a look at Papert and Ferrere and have in, in a really, really fascinating video where they actually have a discussion about school and teaching mathematics. After you watch the video, then answer two different forums. The first one concentrates on what Papert was saying. 
What does prepare define as three as the three stages people go through as learners, and what is his concern with stage two? How does Papert see technology as possibly changing what he sees as the problem inherent in stage two? And then Freire says, in 20 to 30 years, these millions of children will be even farther from technology. With the benefits of hindsight, do you agree with his prediction? Provide evidence to support your claim. And then Ferrari says, I state that this school is bad, but I don't state that a school is disappearing and will disappear. For me, the issue is not to end school, but to change it completely and radically and to give birth from a body that doesn't correspond anymore to the techno technological truth of the world, to a new being as actual as technology itself. So I keep fighting in the hope of putting school on the level of its time, which doesn't mean to bury it, but to remake it. What is your interpretation of Freire's argument? And what does it mean for your teaching? I've put both the video and a video transcript because sometimes with the heavy accents, it's, it's hard to understand. You're, you're welcome to watch the video, read the transcript, do both, and then step two, answer the two sets of questions. Finally, I have put um, the NETS T uh, in your reading folder for this week. Now, the NETS T stands for National Education Technology Standards, and they have them for several groups, and the slash T means for teachers. It's from the organization of ISTE. According to their web web website, the International Society of for Technology in Education, ISTE, okay, is the premier membership association for educators and educational leaders committed to empowering connected learners in a connected world. ISTE has been basically the national group that has defined educational technology standards for some time and for decades and you'll see them mostly referred to still as NETS. And this graphic though and that term is actually old. They recently started to try and rebrand their standards. Same standards, but they're rebranding them, and they're now calling them ISTE standards. And this, these are ISTE standards T um, for teachers. And it's basically a set of standards that uh, that should apply to using technology in teaching. Here's a link to the technology standards, and they're also in your reading folder. But I'm going to summarize them right here. Uh, number one is to facilitate and inspire student learning and creativity, to design and develop digital age learning experiences and assessments, to model digital age work and learning, to promote and model digital citizenship and responsibility, and to engage in professional growth with leadership. ISTE acknowledges, as does the, the national, our Department of Education in their national um, technology plan, which they put out in 2010, that there are essential conditions that have to happen for teachers to achieve those standards and for the students to achieve the standards they've set out for students. These conditions are also a summary of them is all, are also provided in your, your reading. Finally, throughout this course, we as a class are going to document how our recordings connect to the nets and to the mathematical practices. I have started a poplet where I have put the nets T and the standards for mathematical practice in. And when we have weekly readings, I'm going to ask each of you to add one popple that connects something in the readings 
for that week to the Nets T or mathematical practices, or ideally both. So take something you've commented on in the forums this week, summarize it, and connect it. And that's going to be step three, to add a popple to our poplet. This collaboration is going to be very valuable. I'm actually bringing up the real poplet now on the screen and we'll zoom in. It's going to be very valuable to you when you do the My Learning ePortfolio assignment, um, the analysis of My Learning ePortfolio assignment. So here I have in the poplet the five ISTE net standards and the Common Core Standards for Mathematical Practices, the eight of them. And what I want you to do is to add one popple, summarizes some piece in the reading, and connects it to one or more of these standards. And in order to give you a start, I've put one in that sort of shows an example of what I'd like to see happening. Some of you were already registered or had signed up in Poplet and I were able to I was able to add you as a contributor immediately. The others of you I used your email and invited you to um, be a, to join and be a contributor and I need you to do that. So this week I would like you to add one popple. To end this week I need you to sign up for um, your class facilitation assignment group. Now what this is is that on weeks 5, 9, 11, and 13, two or three of you are going to actually facilitate the class online. The topics and the readings are on our Google spreadsheet that you're going to sign up on. There is also a description of the assignment and a rubric on titanium. So what you need to do now is sign up, figure out what your groups, email each other, talk to each other, and figure out which, cl which class you're going to facilitate. Okay, And then you'll have to read the readings, collaborate, plan it out, and then once you got your plan done, you got to run it by me, just so we make sure we're covering all the bases. And then you're going to set up your class on your blogs. That's why I had you set up blogs. So you're basically, if you have a presentation, it will go on the blog. If you have activities, it will go on the blog. If you have a discussion, you will be facilitating it on the blog or, or a combination of the blogs. So the final step will be to post everything you need to conduct this class the Friday before the week that you're facilitating. Let's take a look at the sign-up sheet. When you go into Titanium, it has a link to a Google, a Google Doc. I still call them Google Docs. It's a Google spreadsheet. And you'll see that week 5, week 9, week 11, and week 13 are here. The topics they're addressing are here, equity and access, graphing calculators, social network and support and su uh, to support math learning, social networking to support math learning, and games and virtual manipulatives, ooh, and geogebra. Next to that is just a listing of the readings. There's two or three readings to go with each of these. They're in folders for those weeks. So week three has a fold. So week 11 has a folder with these two readings in it. And what you need to do now in this next week is sign up in the ment mentor member columns uh, so and create your group so you guys can get started. Again, you'll find everything you need on our Titanium website. When you get to week two, the readings are in the folder. The video links are here in addition to in the PowerPoint. The forums are here. The link to the poplet is here. And the link to sign up for your class facilitation group is here. 
This Word document goes through the instructions and the rubric by which it will be graded. And finally, I have two questions for you this week uh, about the talking hand or no talking hand and how long week two activities took. As we wrap up, I'd like to talk to you about one more thing. I promised you to keep it short this week, so this is where we will end. In, in week three, we will be individually investigating a content tool and explaining how you would integrate it into your classroom. But I wanted to make you aware of an opportunity this next week. For those of you who are available, I know this is an awkward time because it's based on the East Coast, but from 1 to 3 p.m. on Tuesday, you can attend a virtual conference put on by Wolfram for teachers. And it's, they're going to go through all sorts of tools and how to use them in the classroom. The whole thing is free. I don't know if every technology they're going to talk about is free or not, but I, I believe that most of them will be. So I plan on attending this conference. And I know some of you might not be able to, but some of you may be able to. If you're able to, then you can use any of the technologies and, or, and the uses that they talk about in the conference uh, in your week three activity assignment. Um, otherwise, what you'll be looking at is investigating one of the NCTM's core math tools. But I wanted to make you aware of this opportunity because I don't know when it will occur again. So it's next Tuesday. You can click on the link and go out there and register and take a look at the different things they're going to, they have two tracks and they have lots of really interesting things set up for the tracks. I think it's going to be fun. Anyway, for now, goodbye until I talk to you next week. Please don't hesitate to send emails, post in the forums, call me if you have any questions. Thank you. Bye-bye.